I've featured the USB rechargeable lights that clip onto the skips or bills of baseball caps in the past. And I never really liked them because this traditional type here just fires the light straight forward. So if I turn this on now and I take the exposure off here and I turn the light off and I pop this on. Uh, okay, here's where I'm working. Uh, I'm looking down at my hands and the light is actually up there. And to actually light it, you have to tilt your head down. I mean, it's doable, but it's a bit awkward. So um, it's not that great for, uh, for the sort of directional aspect. However, in March of this year, I bought this one. Yeah, this is well into the year. I should have featured this, this before. I wish I had featured it before because the price has gone up dramatically because it's pretty good. And I reckon the price has been driven up by the fact it's pretty good. Let me demonstrate this one because this one, as you've already noticed, is angleable. Right, okay. So I'll put it on. I shall put the light out, click the switch to turn this on. Oh, get the right button here. And now I can aim the light exactly where I want it. And I can also use it as a reduced intensity setting as well. Or have the infrared, the swipe that you put your hand in front of. I shall show you that. The light is coming back. Watch your eyes. And I shall lock the exposure so it doesn't yo-yo up and down. So the swipe feature, uh, you've got two buttons here marked confusingly on and off, but they seem to have changed that now. It's all one button, double-sided now. You can click it once and it goes at full brightness. Click it again, it goes at reduced brightness. Click it again, it goes off. Click and hold it. Nothing happens. It doesn't do the SOS thing. However, click this one. And uh, is it going to show? Is the infrared going to show? It's not really showing, is it? I can see the red LED shine through it. But the gist is that when you pass your hand in front of it, it will turn on and off. And that means that if you've got gloves in your hands and you can't fumble the buttons, then that's kind of helpful. Uh, the hat, incidentally, BCDC, BigClive.com, various ones available. Simply go to the merchandise page of my website, BigClive.com, download the image that you like or the embroidery file that you like and get it made at a local company. Uh, that's the fastest, cheapest, easiest way for you to get merch. So this is fully swivelable. It is rechargeable. I get the feeling that this is mostly lithium battery in here. It seems to have a decent capacity. I'm sure I test this at the time, but I'm not sure. However, when you tilt it down, it reveals the USB charging port at the back. Let me just zoom down this a little bit so we can see this better. I shall plug a random USB lead into this and show you another nice feature that most other ones don't have. Once it starts charging, you'll see it's got the power bank type thing where it shows you 25, 50, 75, 100%. And one of the nicest things is that when you've got that on your... Uh, skip, you can actually see these lights and the illuminated buttons um, to actually, well, to find where they are in the first place, and also to give you an indication of how your battery is lasting. It's very good. Note that these buttons look as though they're glow-in-the-dark ones. They are not glow-in-the-dark. I they've, they've got that colour, but if I held one up to the floodlight above the bench and they went into a dark room and there was nothing. Anyway, let's find my spudger and we'll take this to bits. Now, I'm not sure if it clips together or if it screws together. Now, one other thing I want to say here. Did I show you this? The keywords are, this isn't the one I got, but it's a, a similar one. The keywords are clip on USB LED hat and the number six finds that. I shall put a, a search link for that. Notice that it's about $10. When I bought this, Earlier in the year, it was $5. I think the reason it's expensive now is because, well, the the new shipping tax that's been applied to all incoming stuff in America has had knock-on effects around the world. It's affected other countries as well. But also, I think it's pretty good. I'm looking for my spudger here. I'm not seeing my spudger. Where is my spudger? Am I going to have to pause while I hunt for my spudger? I've been spudging things. That's probably why I'm not finding the spudger. I'm finding everything here... But the spudger, well, that's a bit disappointing. I tell you what, I shall just use a very sharp knife instead because I think there might be screws under these covers, but I could be wrong. I shall lift it off. I'm not really bothered. It's just like, eh, no, there's not screws. 
Does that mean there's not going to be screws under here either? It's most likely there's not going to be screws under there either. Sticky stuff. No, I've completely screwed up. Right, I'm going to have to get a spudger now. Right, one moment, please. I have found my spudger. I Sisamo. Um, not a sponsor, but I have to say they might as well because this is the best spudger I've actually used. So let's try clicking this open by getting this in here and just cracking it apart. It's cracking apart. This is promising. Let's see if I can stick it right through the middle of a lithium battery, which I think is in the back. Okay. This is quite promising, but I get the feeling, oh, you know what? It might have to be released from here first, and this is where the lithium battery is. Okay. Spudge that case. Oh, click the button. Oh, oh. I've noticed one seller offering 600 milliamp hour and 800 milliamp hour capacity. This one says 1000 milliamp hour. It turns out they're a bit cheap. And both connections are going in one end. That's interesting. Okay. Let's uh, turn this back off. Although it was quite attractive while it was lit. Here we go. Oh, different. Different. And there's screws. Look, there's screws. I won't just force it out. Let's undo the screws. Is that chip doing everything? I'd guess that's the charge control chip. But everything else, including the battery level, may be based on that chip. There's a couple of little transistors underneath. One will be probably doing the infrared LED, maybe. One will be doing the other LEDs. There's the buttons in the bottom and the LEDs. Okay, tell you what, I shall, I shall take some pictures of this so we can get a good zoom in in this and then we can reverse engineer it. It is reverse engineered. Let us explore this. So these are the two sections of the circuit board. This one is the right way around. I've flipped this one over so all this sort of markings will be slightly skewed. That's why I've written resistor values on because they're quite hard to read when they're reversed. And that's just so that everything tallies up. So say, for instance, um, this pair of plated through holes here actually correlates to the plated through holes there. So if you want to take a snapshot of this for your own reverse engineering pleasure, let's just zoom in it just a tiny little bit. Oh, that's that's way too much. But let's uh, let, that's good enough. That is good enough. OK, so let's start with this reverse engineering. The USB port comes to an LTH7. This is a standard charge control chip, the lithium battery. The lithium cell itself does appear to have a little protection circuit board on it, which is quite nice. So there's a decoupling capacitor across the incoming supply for stability of this chip, and there's another decoupling capacitor basically across supply for the stability of that chip. It just takes any sort of peaks and glitches out. It evens things out. There is a uh, 242, 2.4 uh, thousand ohm resistor here, which sets the charge current that this will charge at. I didn't actually test that, but it's going to be, for that value, it's going to be sort of the, probably the sort of 500 milliamps, maybe, up to about an amp. Technically speaking, you could charge this when it's a 1000 milliamp power cell, which is generous. So it could charge an amp. I'm actually going to guess it's going to be closer to the sort of 500 milliamp mark, though. And this is good. Um, a little pull-up resistor there for the signal that comes back from this. Um, a couple of resistors, a 10k resistor down here and this resistor here, act as a voltage divider just so it can actually sense when it's connected to USB. When it's actually in use, when it's operating, when you click the buttons, they pull down to the zero volt rail. I'll show you the complete schematic in a moment. And it signals to the chip to turn on either this transistor which will turn on all the LEDs, the white LEDs, and also this green LED to indicate they're on, which is a bit of a moot point. Or if you cr click the other button, it turns on the red LED and it starts uh, pulsing this LED over here. Oh, this LED over here, which is the infrared LED, um, with this transistor. And uh, then that's picked up by this receiver, which is only enabled by the processor when it actually wants to actually use it to save power. Um, after that, it's basically speaking the four LEDs here to uh, 
show the sort of the status of the battery, and that does appear to be being done with some sort of uh, battery level monitoring circuitry in here. Um, I can't really see, and it must have an internal voltage reference. I couldn't see any external components that would allude to providing that external reference. Okay, let's take a look at the schematic itself. It's very straightforward. I was expecting more. I thought there's going to be something fancy. There's not. We'll zoom down just a little bit more. The USB incoming supply has that capacitor over it. I shall just splodge those contacts. And it goes up to the LTH7, which is a TP4054 in disguise. Uh, this is the resistive divider that provides a sort of safe microcontroller level signal that the USB supplies on. You couldn't supply it from the 5 volt directly because this microcontroller is probably operating, well it is operating at about 4.2 volts tops, so you'd be exceeding its supply rail voltage. So that's why they divide that down here. There's the resistor on the LTH7 that sets the current. The output from this tells it when it's charging, so that basically, by comparing these two lines, it can tell that the USB supply is there and it can flash the light to show it's charging. And then once it's fully charged, it will detect on this line here that pulls low, and it's normally pulled high by this one mega ohm resistor. That's that one mega ohm resistor there. Um, when it pulls low, it knows that it's actually... Uh, actually, it pulls low to show it's charging, I think, or is that when it's charged? Not really sure. But either way, it indicates back when it is charged. I would guess that it's going to be low to show it's charging and then it floats high afterwards. To indicate the charge state, it's got a 100 ohm resistor feeding four LEDs. Then it uh, switches those in combination just to show the bar graph effect to show the state of charge. It's got the two other LEDs, the red and the green one. One K in series the red, which is, runs at low level. That's the infrared sensor one. And the two K, uh, which is being run at very low current. It's just basically, I would say it's to light the buttons. But to be honest, they're going to be lit by the LEDs that are in front of them because there's the circuit board and there's the buttons and there's the white LEDs. They're going to be swamped by that. So the green LED is almost a bit of a moot point. When it wants to switch on the main six LEDs that you, your working LEDs, the white ones, it's got a simple 5 ohm resistor and it's got a J3Y. The reason it's all a bit splodgy down here, the pen ran out of ink here, and I was looking at the logo back to front. I, I actually looked for Y3J transistors and did not find them. I did, however, once I'd worked out what was going wrong. J3Y, it's a standard half amp rated NPN transistor. Um, and that's used, they use two of those with 1K base resistors to switch the six white LEDs. And also when it put, puts it into infrared mode, it turns on this infrared receiver by applying the logic output to its actual power input and uh, then senses the feedback back via another input. And it also pulses this transistor at high frequency to modulate the output. Um, and that switches the infrared infrared LED with a 100 ohm resistor and the 100 ohm resistor will be used to tune the range of that unit. Uh, there was a 10 ohm resistor in one of these two leads. I'm not sure which. I'm guessing it might be the power lead. Not really sure um, because it's kind of symmetrical component and it was in series with one of them. But uh, between the processor and either the positive going into this infrared receiver to turn it on or the, uh, the data back the signal back from it. After that, we've got two buttons, and that's it to select the modes. It's quite a complex-ish looking circuit board. It's got a lot of components on it, but most of them are just basically indicator LEDs and stuff like that, and the, the voltage dividers. It's all really pretty logical. So that, I uh, shall zoom out, is that. It's uh, quite a neat unit. It's very standard. Um, I've had this sitting for, well, since March, and the thing was still showing a fairly full charge. I don't know if it just, I don't know if it's timing it, use over the point it's fully charged, or if it's actually monitoring a voltage level. I guess it's monitoring a voltage level. Um, But that's it. It's very textbook. It's uh, nice that it's got a protected cell. Nice that the one I got had a 1000 milliamp hour cell. Why are the other ones advertising options of 600 and 800 with different price ranges? Um, maybe it, it would be good to actually find one of the original ones that looks like this. It did have a number on the label, but I, I couldn't find the number when I searched uh, on eBay for that particular number.
But that's it. A dedicated microcontroller uh, to the task. Well, I say it, it's a universe microcontroller programmed to the task. The charge chip, the two transistors that drive the in, uh, infrared LED and the six output LEDs um, and the sw independently switched infrared receiver with that little mysterious 10 ohm resistor one of its inputs. That is more or less it. It's pretty good. I quite like it. Uh, I'm going to put this back together and probably use it because it's actually one of the most useful uh, baseball cap skip lights I've come across. I'm supposed to say Bill or Rim. Just, each different country has its own different name. To me, the baseball cap, I'd call that a skip, but this might be a Scottish thing. Uh, but there we go. The One of the better and you know, if you do go and look for one of these on eBay, make sure the one you choose is the one that has the hinge up and down front. There are other ones that look very similar that are not swivelable, but the swivelable bit is what makes this really special. That and the battery level indicators. But that's very good. I like that.